Hello YouTube, this is SWLA Mech 84 again. It's my second video on the roller tip steady rest repairs or modifications. Uh, right now I have my half inch 01 tool steel mounted up in the chuck and I'm getting ready to face it off so I have a nice clean face to start with. And I'll show you that now. And I'll probably try to speed some of this up. And I know there's a lot of things that I could probably do quicker, but I work slow. I try to baby my tools. And <clears throat> hopefully it's not too boring for you. But I'm going to go ahead and start making some chips. Extend a little bit of work piece here. Now the piece we're making would be the drive shaft. So it's the small threaded section and <clears throat> there's a couple of features to this drive shaft here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm still working on this focus here. But I have a two ODs. This raised center section here is actually the, the half inch OD of the 01 tool steel, so I don't have to do anything to that. I gotta turn this down 390 all the way, I think 900 thousandths, and then I'm gonna turn this down to the maximum major diameter of the threads, which is 3 8 24, so it's gonna be 3 8 of an inch in diameter, 375, and I have a thread relief here on the back side if you can see that there that thread relief there is about an eighth of an inch because I use a parting tool that I have ground myself to do that and it's a little bit big but 
it worked for what I needed to. So let me get a live center in here. And then I'm going to extend my workpiece out a little bit. Got this mounted in the three jaw chuck. I found that this three jaw chuck is really close most of the time, especially when you put the right jaws back in to the right numbers. Get that snugged up there. Okay. Bring my live center in. For a little extra support. Okay. And then I want to mark on here my two inches. Because this piece is two inches long. Or pretty close to two inches. I'm not doing any of this stuff to the down to the thousand. That'll serve a purpose. And the way I'm gonna mark it, I hope nobody gives me any bad comments. But I use a, an old set of dial calipers that don't even have the depth rod in the back that I picked up at a garage sale, I think, for maybe a dollar. I'll set that at my two inches. And then I'm going to use the inch button on my lathe and I'm going to scribe a line so I know where I want to stop and start at. I hope nobody really lets into me that bit for this. Now I have a nice scribed line there at my two inch mark. And this diameter here is 390 and 900 thousandths long. So I'm going to put another mark at 900 thousandths from the end there. I guess if I wasn't so cheap I'd buy some layout fluid and spend some more time on that. Get my 900 thousandths line. So now I need to turn down this diameter to 390 for 900 thousandths. And right now we're at 0.5. <clears throat> the O1 tool steel comes brown. And it's got pretty good tolerances on it, so it's actually very close to a half inch. So I'm going to get set up, find a zero point, and start cutting some metal off of here. I'm going to straighten up my tool post a little. I had a nice relief on it there so that I could part these, face it easily. I'm just going to use the jaw there to straighten it up so that I can actually get a shoulder. And that's as close as I want to get to that. I want to still be able to pull out and maybe clean the face off. Get that snugged up. Okay, unlock my carriage. All right, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna peck at the surface there until I catch a, a burr so I can tell that I'm at zero. my feed going the right direction here and let's see if I have my feeds and speed set up right I'm not looking for a superior surface finish on this so 
if it's okay, I'm gonna take it. I can polish it up, but no one's ever gonna see it. It doesn't have to be very perfect. And I really just wanna get these done so I can move on to the next step of my project. So let's see what we can get going here. Grizzly lathe has. It's very convenient. We put 900,000 some uh, calipers again. We'll just see how close this is. Close enough for me. Alright, and that is, we'll set that as a zero. So I'll back off and move back over. Come back into my zero. And let me get a, a set of digital calipers out to actually measure the OZ. It's my next step up. Of course, it's not much of a step. But. So we're at 472, and we need to be 390. So I'm going to go ahead and take. 70, so I'll take 40 thousandths per pass. So I'm going to crank in 40 thousandths and get that going.
on this triangular bit. Found these very cheap on eBay. Last me a very, very long time. I was at 60 on my dials. I'm going to come back and I'm going to run, clean this off. And let's see what our diameter is. Just to make sure. 412. So I can take. 20 thousandths so I'll take 20 more stop here. I don't know if I'll be able to show you. I have a magnetic indicator base set up right here just stuck on so that I know whenever it bumps it that I'm pretty close to where I was again. It's just my cheap way of having a stop. This machine doesn't have any stops or micrometers or anything. And the hand wheel for the longitudinal axis has some pretty big divisions on it, so I don't really rely on that too much. Okay. So there is my first diameter. I'm gonna go ahead and back the live center off. And I'm gonna grab one of the bushings. 
one of these bushings here that needs to slide over that and just check it. Let's see. And it does slide over. Probably polish that up with a little sandpaper. It's not a bad thing. I can't snag a fingernail in it, so it's not terrible. I'm gonna go ahead and replace my live center. That back in there just to snug it up, give it a little support. And I'm gonna switch out to my parting tool holder. Which is this right here. It's nothing fancy. It's just a piece of high speed steel that I've ground and sharpened with uh, India stone. And it's very thick. I've had bad luck with parting tools. I don't actually have an official parting tool holder. I have the blade, but I don't have an actual holder for one. So I'm going to bring this over. Let's see. I'm going to reposition so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to make sure that I'm good flat here. I'm just going to use the chuck. Okay. Make sure you can see that. No, not quite. Still trying to get used to getting this camera fixed up everywhere. So please bear with me, I apologize. Still yeah, can't. Okay. Oh, there we go. You can see the tip of the tool bit right here. And I'm just gonna loosen up my tool holder. Bring it up to the chunk and let it straighten itself out until I don't see any gap. And that's close enough to dial in for me for this application. Okay, so that's nice and straight. Back this out here and we'll go in and clean that little shoulder up. Not terribly important, but good housekeeping keep my shoulder from having that large radius on there okay get the camera to focus on the correct thing here it's having a hard time focusing on that This is much more difficult than it seems. So everyone whose videos I watch, I really appreciate the trouble you go through to try to get all of this footage. Because this is really not easy. Uh, I apologize, this is terrible. I imagine some people are getting ready to shut the channel off. All right, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna kiss off that radius on that shoulder there. Okay. into my live center. Go ahead and get my tool extended. Of course I wouldn't run it that far out if I was 
parting something off, but I'm just cleaning up a small bit of material here. So it shouldn't cause a problem. Okay. Get back in here where you can see. All right. square shoulder and now I'm going to go ahead and part off this piece at this scribe line that I made right here earlier with my garage sale calipers I still think somebody's going to say something about that but that's okay Take my tool back in a little here, and I'm going to part it with the power feed, which I was never very fond of doing until I got this tool made, and, or until I made this tool so that I don't have any breakages. I'm going to come in, I'm going to go a little bit to the left of my line here so that I have a little extra. I'm going to lock my table down on the Grizzly. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but no. I have to lock my uh, my apron lock here with a Allen screw. I'd like to make one of the quick handles that I've seen people make for them. That looks very nice and convenient. Okay. Get in here. Maybe it'll focus on the correct thing this time. But I'm a little bit to the left of my scribe line. As you can see there. I've got my feet set. I need to reverse my in feed. Okay. I'm gonna check that just to make sure it's going in the right direction. get started here to check my live center. I can only go in so far the way this tool set up and then I'm going to have to remove my live center and just let it fall. But let's get this parted off here. better I have a small angle on the right side of that parting tool so you won't be able to see it from there but there's this I have a small angle relief ground on the other side so it leaves a pretty bad finish on the part that gets actual actually gets parted off as you can see here but that's okay. I can tuck that back up and face it off very quickly and not a big deal. So I'm going to get this piece of stock removed from my lathe and get the piece we just parted off mounted back in. 
Never leave my chuck wrench in my shop. One of my friend's father, that was his first thing he ever told me whenever I 